Hey guys, we've finally reached the last figure in the Marvel Legends Fantastic Four Retro Series. So right now we're gonna have a look at the high evolutionary action figure. He's packaged on that same eye-catching and striking retro card. Over here the action figure is packaged in a plastic bubble. He comes with just a set of interchangeable hands and no other accessories. And moving on to the back of the card, there's the artwork of the High Evolutionary over here. Some line artwork here also. Description of the character, the rest of the figures in the wave, and this product information in different languages at the bottom. So let's go ahead and get him open. To unbox the figure, I slice the plastic bubble off so that I can save the vintage card back. The set of alternate hands are cast in a cherry colored metallic looking plastic. These hands are meant to complement the hands that are already by default on the figure so that you get a full set of fists as well as the splayed hands. The splayed hand really just looks like an upscaled male version of the splayed hands that we've seen on a lot of female Marvel Legends action figures. Both hands are articulated inwards as well as outwards. His wrist gauntlets don't actually slide off, they're fixed on. So to swap the hands, you just pop them right on. And this is what he looks like with a set of fists. And this is what he looks like with both splayed hands. It's a pity that Hasbro did not include any of those energy effects because those would have been really useful. Onto his sculpt, he is made of completely brand new parts. There are just two colors of plastics used all over him. The first being the metallic silver parts on his limbs, and the rest of him is made up of this cherry colored metallic looking plastic. His overall color scheme kind of reminds me of the Silver Centurion Iron Man. And this color scheme also really reminds me of the Crimson Dynamo. So I see some potential in the silver armored limbs being reused for a new version of the Crimson Dynamo. Despite the new sculpting work on him, I will say however that he looks just a little boring to me. The cherry colored metallic parts could have used a little bit of light shading to bring some of the texture out, while the metallic armored parts on his arms and legs could have also used a dark wash. And that dark wash could have brought out some more of that sculpting detail with the ribs in his armor pieces. And because of the lack of paint applications on his face, you only really see all the good detail and sculpting work when you zoom in. He's got a lot of tech detail on his head, and that's great work because it really adds to his character. I also like his very distinct trademark mohawk at the top of his helmet, and there's silver paint applications for the panels over here on both sides of the mohawk. Down to the sides, he also has caps for where his ears should be. And back to the front of his face, he does have a little bit of that world weary look, with a slight hint of madness underneath. And the hits of yellow paint over here definitely bring out his eyes compared to the rest of his body. Moving on to his torso, it is a smooth armor design with enlarged shoulder pads. I'm glad that Hasbro has applied silver paint to all those rivets all over him that go all the way down to his skirt. And thankfully, all that paint on the rivet is also carried on to the back. I was almost mentally prepared for Hasbro to skip out on those paint applications like we've seen on recent figures. All that cost cutting measures just really, really annoys me. On his arms, he's got silver metallic plastic. There's sculpting for the ribs in the armor that goes over the muscle contours. And over here, he has the cherry colored metallic plastic for his gauntlets as well as his gloves. Moving on to his legs, we see that same silver metallic plastic used with also the ripped armor design and his boots are also made of that same cherry colored metallic plastic as his gloves. So overall, the figure is rather simple in the use of plastics. I do appreciate the brand new sculpt and it's also faithful to his design in the comics. On to articulation, his head is on a double ball dumbbell joint, so you can spin his head all the way around. There's decent sideways tilt to the right as well as the left. You can look down just a little bit as well as up. He's got a swivel hinge at the shoulders, so his arms do go all the way around as well as going out that far. That hinge being just a little tight. He's got a bicep swivel, so they go 360. Double hinged pinless elbows, so that's pretty good range. He's got a swivel hinge at the wrist, so they go 360, as well as articulating in, as well as out. He's got a mid-torso ball joint, so that gets you some sideways tilt. He can also crunch forward just a little bit, as well as a bit backwards. He's got a waist swivel that's hidden beneath this skirt piece, and this skirt piece is actually keyed into his waist. 
So as you swivel him, that skirt piece also follows to the right as well as to the left. That skirt piece also has high slits down the sides so they do not hinder the sideways split in the hips. Also, no problems forward and backward with the ball jointed hips. Thigh swivel so you can swing his leg outwards as well as inwards. Double jointed pinless knees that gets you a good bit of range. Since his boot is assembled as a separate piece, it does have a swivel, so you can swing his calf outwards as well as inwards. He also has ankle tilt upwards as well as downwards, and finally ankle pivot outwards as well as inwards. The High Evolutionary isn't known as an agile character, so the articulation should be sufficient for him. I just feel that the forward bend in that mid-torso ball joint is just a little limited. He definitely feels a little light in terms of accessories, and Hasbro should have included some effect parts, but I suppose you can also borrow those from some previous Marvel Legends. The High Evolutionary stands at about six and a half inches up to the top of his mohawk and that's about 16 and a half centimeters and here he is with the rest of the fantastic four retro wave i will have to say that i really quite enjoy this wave most of the figures are pretty strong releases but ultimately that's with the exception of sue's really terrible head sculpt the high evolutionary does feel a little short to me ideally he could have been taller by half a hit the High Evolutionary has quite a long history in the Marvel Universe, so I'm gonna do quite a bit of comparisons starting with the Silver Surfer and Doctor Doom. Here he is with Hercules and Ganis Vell. He appears quite small beside Thor and the Hulk. Here he is with Wolverine and Spider-Man. With Beast and Mr. Sinister. Iron Man and Ultron. And here he is with Magneto, Quicksilver, and Scarlet Witch. Here he is with some G.I. Joe Classified series, and some Star Wars Black series. I really appreciate the new sculpting work on the High Evolutionary figure, but it falls a little flat because of a lack of paint applications. The accessories are also a little bit light, and he could have used some effect parts. Ultimately, he's got too much history with the Marvel Universe to pass on, so he should be a great addition to your cosmic display shelf. Please like and share this video, let me know what you think in the comments below, and subscribe to my channel for more toy reviews. Thanks for watching, take care, and stay safe.